Today we're going to talk about yet another rather controversial subject within the cryptocurrency community, and that is whether or not Bitcoin can replace fiat currencies. If you read any of the comments on Coindesk, Cointelegraph, CryptoCoins News, the threads on Bitcoin Talk, Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, no matter where you go, there are some comments somewhere that talk about how the government is a scam, they talk about how they continue to print all this money, and therefore you lose the value of your dollar each year. They talk about the fact that they did quantitative easing, which we know that basically no economists are able to agree on whether or not that was the appropriate strategy. I can tell you that some economists think it's an entire complete scam by the government. Other economists believe it was required in order to provide the fiscal stimulus to jumpstart the economy again. Yet despite that, we have seen one of the slowest recoveries we've ever seen since a recession with this previous Great Recession in 2008. And so obviously there's a lot of discussion about the competence of central banks, a lot of discussion about the competence of the Fed, and a lot of questions related to the traditional systems of fiat currencies. And as a result of that, we have this huge distrust in the government, huge distrust in the banks, especially after the comments from Jamie Dimon and a number of other bankers that have made very clear that some of them are so biased, they're not able to be open-minded about the technology and the potential of Bitcoin and label it as fraud and a scam, despite the fact that it is way more open than any bank will ever be. So of course there's a ton of criticism of governments and there's a ton of criticism of the banks and that all makes sense. What doesn't make sense, and at least in my opinion, are the people who try to say that Bitcoin in the long term will be capable of replacing fiat currencies. In order for Bitcoin to replace a fiat currency, it would have to support the entire economy of whatever nation adopts it. So let's go with the US for example. right? So the U.S. is a consumption-driven economy, right? If you think about GDP, consumption is the largest component in the United States. As a result of this, it's very important that people spend their money, which means in the long term, you need inflation. People don't understand this. This is amazing to me that people think inflation is bad. Okay, inflation is bad when it's too high, but inflation around 2% is very healthy for an economy and you might be saying to yourself why is it healthy for an economy for prices to continue going up well it encourages people to spend more today and when people are encouraged to spend more today small and medium businesses start to make more money and when they start to make more money they start to get to pay more wages out to their workers and then the workers get to spend more do you realize how this loop works right a steady small amount of inflation encourages people to save less, encourages them to spend more, which increases GDP, especially in a consumption-driven economy, and in the long term, it's going to encourage businesses to expand further and further. So first of all, you do need inflation, right? And in the long term, Bitcoin is going to be a deflationary asset, right? Right now, it's inflationary, but in the long term, we know that that's going to decline, especially by the time we get to like 2032, 2033 that inflation number is going to go down to very low numbers, right? So what I want to point out here is that when we think about Bitcoin as a replacement for fiat currencies, first of all, we do need inflation. Okay, so that's the first problem with Bitcoin as a replacement for fiat currencies. Here's the second problem. We need credit. It's as simple as that. We need a money supply that is demand driven, that can be pulled, not push. What do I mean by this is that when there is a huge demand for new money in the economy, you need monetary policy that can match that demand, at least to the extent that we can see an expansion of the economy as a whole. Why do you think the U.S. is so wealthy? We have some of the best capital availability in the world. Small and medium businesses that need capital to grow have access to this through the traditional banking system that many of the cryptocurrency scene hate. But what I want to point out is that this system has worked very well for us and has made us one of the wealthiest nations in the world. So yes, it is screwed up in a lot of ways. Monetary policy, especially when you think about quantitative easing, there has been a ton of mistakes that have been made, right? We don't know if quantitative easing was the right decision. In fact, I would argue we have seen a lot of evidence to suggest that it wasn't because 
we are seeing a very weird economy right now where we have very low inflation despite interest rates being so low and very tepid growth despite the fact that interest rates have been basically zero percent at least in the US they've been very close to zero percent we're only starting to hike up the Fed funds right now and if you look at Europe and if you look at Japan interest rates are still zero or lower we actually have negative interest rates in the world right now I mean can you think about that for a second negative interest rates right so there's a lot of evidence to suggest that worldwide we have made a lot of mistakes right and the central banks may not be making the best decisions on monetary policy I shouldn't even use the word may they're definitely not making the right decisions on monetary policy but what I want to illustrate here is that monetary policy whether you like it or not is a very important part of why the economy works okay a credit driven economy is very important and for a credit driven economy to work well without overheating you do need some control over interest rates and Bitcoin cannot provide that because it cannot print new money and there's no real way for it to have a centrally controlled interest rate which a lot of people will argue well the Fed shouldn't be setting those interest rates in the first place the market should be setting those interest rates well the market does set interest rates in the long term right that's the purpose of the yield curve right if you look at the right end of the yield curve it's free floating but the left portion of the yield curve is influenced by governments what I want to point out about this is that this system has worked fairly well of course we've had moments like 2008 where the entire system was about to collapse and yes that's what caused the creation of Bitcoin in the first place I get that and I'm not saying I have a lot of faith in the Fed I'm not saying I have a lot of faith in central banks I'm not saying I have a lot of faith in Wall Street because I'll be honest with you I don't and I think that Bitcoin is gonna revolutionize the world it is going to become the global currency but it will not replace fiat currencies because fiat currencies are what is required to build the level of economies we're talking about here Bitcoin cannot do that and I'm not talking about market cap here that's not the problem the fundamentals of Bitcoin are the problem you cannot be a store of value and currency at the same time you have to give up one you cannot serve two masters some of the best advice I've ever been given you cannot serve two masters let the fiat currencies take care of the traditional sense of what a currency is and let Bitcoin become something different let it become the king of the remittances market let it become the currency made by the people for the people worldwide but you do not need it to support the economies of the nations around the world you do not need it to revolutionize the world in the sense that it replaces all of these fiat currencies to be successful because if you think about Bitcoin you are encouraged to hold it today and not spend it I mean think about this for a second right how many times do you think that there has been someone that has thought about spending a Bitcoin but has chosen not to because it would be better to just hold on to it because it'll be worth more a year from now do you really think that there can be an economy based off of that philosophy no there can't be so you would have to give up the store of value portion of Bitcoin it again just doesn't make a ton of sense for Bitcoin to replace traditional fiat systems it should work alongside them or not even work with them just be an alternative that's what it should be but we do need these fiat systems to support our small and medium businesses we need them to support the economy as a whole I know that's fairly controversial that's why I made the video and actually I'm planning on making hopefully a series of controversial videos like this one that nobody's willing to talk about because they don't want to get pitchforked by the viewers they don't want to get pitchforked by comments I don't care you can say whatever you want I'm open-minded to hearing from both sides of the story I'm gonna tell you that I do not see any public blockchain replacing fiat currencies at least during my lifetime and probably not during yours either okay it may happen 200 years in the future it's not gonna happen during our lifetime so if you're investing because you think that that's true you think that there's going to be some huge black swan event that causes the collapse of the dollar and all this money's going to flow into Bitcoin I'm going to tell you right now the probability of that happening is so low that it really shouldn't be a reason for investment that's a political reason to invest that is not an actual financial reason to invest at least not in my opinion okay so again controversial video as usual I hope you guys liked it let me know your thoughts in the comments I love hearing some of the discussions related to topics of this nature 
because especially it incites some really emotional responses, but there's also some very smart people thinking about it. So if you have any thoughts on the subject, leave them in the comments section below. I will get back to you as soon as possible. Leave a like and subscription. Thank you for watching.